And welcome to this edition of Trader Talk TV. Today we've got Andrew from Double Verify in our studios. Great, Andrew thanks. Andrew Great to be here. He's the SVP of RevOps at Double Verify, is that correct? VP, but I'll VP, take the S. SVP, SVP. <laughs> um, so today we're talking about CTV because obviously it is one of the hottest areas in programmatic right now and general digital marketing as well. But always there's a big issue around uh, where an area blows up in terms of revenue. There's always fraud. And we're going to talk about today because Double Verify are, are building a product around this. But before we talk about what you guys are doing in that area, Andrew, let's talk about CT, CTV versus the OTT because with a definition yeah. would be great just to start with for our viewers. So and let's talk about CTV. And honestly, anybody that you ask about this, there, there's, there's, right, there's going to yeah. be a little bit of confusion, maybe a little bit of disagreement even, but I'm going to try to bundle it down to the simplest form. Okay. Right? So OTT, okay? It sounds like a brand new concept. It's actually been around forever. Mm -hmm. Like basically think about it as any sort of video ads that you're buying, video content, right? Video content that's streamed over the internet equals OTT. Mm. Whether it's long form, short form, that's where people sort of debate around it. Yeah. But that includes traditional outlets. So if you think about things like desktop, right, which we've been buying forever. Yeah. Mobile tablet. And this includes apps and web in these yeah. areas. Yeah. But I'm not going to focus on these areas, nope. right? Where we're really focusing on right now, because we're seeing so much growth in the ecosystem around mm -hmm. this, is what we're calling connected TV, mm. right? So, you know, CTV makes up sort of three different core areas. Uh, the first of which, gaming consoles, gaming platforms, right? So things like your Xbox, your, your PlayStation, et cetera. You have your connected devices. So things like Roku, Apple TV, et cetera, mm. right? And then over here, you have your uh, your actual smart TVs. Yeah. So Samsung, LG yeah. devices that you can buy, which already have apps pre-installed, mm. right? And these areas over here are making up a ton of the growth that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. um, just some numbers that kind of blew my mind as yeah. well. Over 10% of the world's population in general accesses OTT okay. once per month. Yeah. So some, for, some form of streaming video content. 56% mm -hmm. of this mm. is connected TV now. So it's a pretty big area. It's and growing. huge and growing. And obviously where, where there's money, there is fraud, uh, especially in a sort of nascent uh, area like CTV. Absolutely. Um, and we were talking for our, I want to talk about some of the areas within CTV where the, the fraudsters are taking advantage. So it'd be good to kind of talk about that because, you know, you, you, you don't hear an awful lot about CTV, but I spoke to sort of uh, some uh, anti-fraud people recently and they said that it's going to be a big area for, for the fraudsters to, to attack. So let's talk about the sort of areas of concern within that sort of ecosystem. Yeah, absolutely. And like, you know, the first thing I'll even say, you you nailed it yourself, where there's money, mm -hmm. fraudsters will go there. High CPMs as well, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Think of the traditional supply and demand curve, mm -hmm. right? Right now, even though I mentioned there's huge numbers when it comes to connected TV, so much of that is still mm -hmm. video gaming content mm -hmm. and things like Netflix, mm -hmm. which aren't ad supported. Mm -hmm. So you have huge populations of people that advertisers are trying to go after mm. and actually relatively little content that you could monetize yeah. via ads. Mm -hmm. So with really high demand, really low supply, yeah. um, eMarketer published a study recently where it's looking like the eCPMs now are over around $20 in mm. the US on this stuff. Tasty. Now, you couple that with what I think a fraudster's dream is, which is low risk, mm. high reward. Yeah. And that's due to a few different areas, right? You know, the first of which, as we mentioned, is already the CPMs that are in place. The second is there's there's little measurement taking place mm. in that system today. Mm. The third is little prosecution. Mm. And then the fourth is even where there is measurement, there are challenges and there aren't many companies that are doing it well yeah. right now. So one of the biggest problems you said before we come on an area is that there's no it's not no standardization across the different platforms. We don't have a JavaScript, which is basically the sort of uh, DNA for most of ad tech within within uh, within the, the web-based system. So uh, is that a big area uh, that frauds are attacking because it's so fragmented right now? Yeah, I'm actually going to draw out sort of, there's four key boxes that present major challenges, right? So the first is JavaScript, which you just mentioned yourself. Mm -hmm. um, most fraud detection companies rely on JavaScript mm. to pick up the signals that you need to identify mm. a fraud signature mm -hmm. and then build that algorithm yeah, behind it. Yeah. Right? Within connected TV environments, the way they operate, they don't support JavaScript. Mm. Right? It's it's usually vast tags. Yeah. At best, maybe like a one by one pixel can mm. be implemented in there. 
So you have to sort of look at things with a fresh pair of eyes mm. and invent new ways of, of, of doing fraud detection. Yeah. The second is the openness of the ecosystem, mm. right? So think about creating content on YouTube. If you want to go on and create a piece of video content on YouTube, you just simply go to the platform, you upload your video, and every once in a while mm -hmm. YouTube catches something that's negative, but it's really easy to get it up there quickly. Yeah. A lot of these connected TV environments operate the same way. You create a channel in your basement and you use you know, a development kit available through one of the streaming platforms. You put it online after about two to three works of dev and no one asks any questions because they're desperate for supply. So no filter. Exactly. The third area is no standards. Yeah. Right? Which you just sort of alluded to yourself. Yeah. Um, when you look at things like more traditional video based content, um, when an ad call is happening, there's things like a user agent that mm -hmm. get disclosed. Mm -hmm. um, even within a mobile app space, there's an app naming convention, there's consistency and standards. There are very little standards in the CTV space. And is that because it's just brand new, or is it just because we haven't got around to kind of you know, sitting down around the table and figuring out what the standards might be. Like. It's actually a little bit of both. Right. Right. So the first is, yes, it is relatively new. But the second is, if you think about it, the way this, let's face it, the way our whole industry operates, we build something and then standards it come. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. like the very first platforms, when they went out there and started creating solutions, they were like, yeah, sure, do whatever you want. Mm. Build 18 versions of the mm. same app and call mm. it 18 different things. Mm. Um, so it's presented us with some challenges today when it mm. comes to standardization and mm. knowing well, if it's this specific app with this name, which has Android in it, mm -hmm. and the same app, which has Chrome in it, mm. are they actually the same app? Yeah. Is someone spoofing this? Is someone faking this? So you can imagine it presents some additional of challenges. Um, the final piece, um, which I think is, is possibly the most complex, but it's the most interesting. Okay. Um, it's called SSAI, yeah. server-side ad insertion. Okay. All right, this is different than what we've originally thought about as client-side ad insertion. Mm -hmm. Client-side ad insertion, it sounds hyper-technical. It's really not. It's basically the way that, sort of where I was drawing earlier, your desktop, your mobile app, and your tablet, the way all of that OTT inventory works is you know, you're know you watching the content, and then during sort of the ad break, the, the ad call happens yeah. in that moment. Yeah. And then along with that comes pixels, mm -hmm. whether it's a brand lift study mm -hmm. or audience measurement or verification. Mm. So the tags are actually serving in the ad itself yeah. while the ad is loading. Yeah, on page effectively. On page effectively, yeah. right? Yeah. Which gives you a lot more transparency and a lot more insight, mm -hmm. right? With SSAI, you've lost the transparency. Now, I don't want to call this out as a bad thing. SSAI is actually fantastic. Um, think about like your own user experience. If you're watching a piece of long form video and you know there's three pre-roll ads, right? Do you really want the content to pause and then buffering no. and then waiting and then the ad runs mm. and then it stops and then it buffers for a second ad, right? It gets really latency frustrating. Latency issues, effectively. Major latency issues, yeah. right? So sort of how, how the industry looked at SSAI was, mm. let's think about a better way to do this. Mm -hmm. Let's find a way of essentially stitching the ads in to the content mm. so it operates like content itself. So it's almost seamless effectively. Exactly. Right. But there are a few challenges that go along with it when it comes to measurement. Okay, so what are those challenges within SSAI? Yeah, it's actually a really good point. Um, it's easier if I draw this out again. I like it. Bit of elbow grease there. I, lo I know, right? I love a good whiteboard yeah. session. It's great. <laughs> so let's start here, right? Where you have your DSP. Yeah. Right? Your DSP goes over to an exchange. Yeah. Your exchange ends up going to a publisher, right? Now that publisher has an ad server, something like Freewheel, yeah. right? And then SSAI goes to what I call sort of a, a double hit, right? So you have over here your CMS platform yeah. plus SSAI. Okay. So again, what this is allowing for is the content itself to be pulling in the ads, mm -hmm. right, all the way through this chain so that seamlessly these two work together right. to run within, within the environment that the user is seeing. Yeah. However, because of this, the ad call itself, right, like where everything is originating from, is coming from a server, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. the, the, a verification tag, anyone else's tag isn't firing with the ad itself. Yeah. These are all, sometimes we'll see during a live streaming event, 10,000 ad calls simultaneously. 
because there's 10,000 people all watching the same streaming event and they know that they don't want there to be latency. They don't want the buffer there. So they'll call these 10,000 ads and our tags firing 10,000 times in rapid succession, right? You have to develop new techniques. You have to really understand how do I see through this so that I'm not classifying everything as just server traffic. I need mm. to read more sort of efficient signals mm. and find different ways around this mm. challenge. So let's just say, how are you working in that environment then? I'm curious, how, what, what, what specifically are you doing there? Because obviously you're re-architecting this for the CTV piece because like it's completely different from the web-based stuff. It is. So tell us what you're doing around here that's addressing this problem. Because that sounds like there's a, it's a whole new layer of tech, tech sort of, uh, tech headache that you have to sort of kind of address there. Completely, like the, the first of which, and like I cannot spell out the importance of this enough, you need to have people who are building products in this space mm -hmm. who have a knowledge of the CTV environment, mm -hmm. right? You know, that example I just gave you where there were 10,000 ad calls simultaneously yeah. during a live streaming event. Mm. If you don't know that that's the way that live streaming works within CTV environments, mm -hmm. you're gonna classify all of that as something like fraudulent data center traffic, mm -hmm. and you're gonna cut off 60% reach for advertisers out there. Oh dear. So all of our engineers who work in this product space they actually have an understanding on how CTV operates and a history of working in that space. Mm. Um, well, when you go from there, this is where like the fun technical aspects come in. Um, the first of which is which we call advanced telemetry, right? It's a really fancy word for data points. Okay. Okay. So within, as I sort of mentioned earlier, like your desktop, your mobile space, right? You don't need to worry so much about that because your JavaScript is able to fire in many cases. It's able to pull in tons of rich data points and figure things out. We had to look at our one by one pixel, so literally just an image tag, which normally can't see much, and we had to build in new rules for new data points for it to look for that historically we've never had to look for before. Sort Good of, shots. exactly. Okay. Step three around that is then sort of the machine learning that you attribute to it, machine learning and algorithms, because it's, it's, that's great that you're collecting all these new data points, but unless you can actually tie it to um, other sources of data to identify where we're seeing instances of mismatches or traffic just doesn't look right, um, it's useless. So we've had to build in a lot of machine learning, a lot of new algorithms to detect this space. And uh, one of the ways we've done that, which is my personal favorite, uh, we have our fraud lab in our Tel Aviv office. Right. And they literally have a whole section of the office, which they call their hardware lab. Right. And it's every type of connected TV device you can think of. So they're basically building around these specific uh, exactly. Okay. It also gives us sort of a first look at when major players in the industry will just change things all of a sudden. Mm. We need to be on top of those changes mm. to make sure that the telemetry that our pixel is trying to pick up matches the new serving chain that we're observing. Mm. So what's what's motivated? Is a marketer to come to you and say, "Look, we need to sort this space out." As you say, it's ten percent, ten percent of our overall media consumption. Then yeah. fifty percent of that CTV related. Uh, are they coming to you and say, "This is a real problem. We don't want the same problems we had in the web-based world. We want to get ahead of the, ahead of the curve here." Which is great because obviously they've seen they've seen this picture before. Right. So are you getting marketers story. coming to you and saying like we need to sort it out ASAP? Yeah. So it's and I, I'm going to be very honest here. It's it's a pure hybrid. Right. Um, there are some really advanced marketers who are partners of ours that we've been working with for mm. years who've said I'm investing more in this area. Mm. You better deliver a solution that mm. can help me solve for this because mm -hmm. I know there is some fraud there. Mm. However, oh, there's a lot of fraud. There's a lot of fraud. Mm. Um, yeah, we've, I mean, we've seen a 120% increase in yeah. connected TV fraud year over year. The amount of inventory out there is hilarious when there's not that much inventory. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I do think there is still a little bit of a misconception in the industry. There are a lot of people that I speak to who come from more of a linear TV buying background. Yeah. And a lot of them are looking at connected TV as just sort of a digital extension of linear. Okay. Oh, it's 100% viewable. It's totally brand safe. There's no fraud there. It's on mm. a big screen. Mm. Um, so I think Misconception. That, yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's why I'm actually really happy you invited me here today. Yeah. Because I, I, you know, I think we need to be talking about this more in the industry. Mm -hmm. That there is something to look for here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, are you educating those those TV people as well about the, the CTV piece absolutely and saying to them look we'll show you what happened in the web based thing you need to kind of have a, a different mindset for this yeah and you know a lot of it also goes to the complexity of agency buying teams mm. right where you actually have traditional audio visual teams who are now sort of moving into the CTV space mm -hmm. or had already been in this space for the past two to three years mm -hmm. So, you know, unfortunately, I think from an education standpoint, they hadn't spent that much time around companies who do things like fraud detection. Yeah. So, you know, right now, what a lot of what we're doing is education upskilling. Okay. 
So is this in market right now, or is this sort of a 2020 launch, or what's the, what's the what's the sort of timeline around this? This is the crazy thing, right? Everyone thinks it's not measurable today, and this is a future solution. Yeah. We released this in 2018. Okay. We've wow. actually had over a full year of data on right. this already. Right. Um, I mean, we're seeing over 100,000 new fraudulent CTV devices per day. With this 100,000 fraud. 100,000. Uh, explain to me, what, what hardware devices? Hardware or? devices. So right. whether it comes to the smart TV itself or the the uh, you know the Roku box, whatever it is, right? Yeah. And it's you know are these are these apps within the Roku environment that's that's doing this type of thing? So it can actually go two ways, right? So you can what a lot of what we're seeing is what we call app spoofing, right? Right. Well, okay. Yes. So you know there's Classic. there's right there's fraud that's going on the same way it happens within desktop space yeah. within the mobile space mm -hmm. where you have players who are sort of hijacking that SSI SSAI call mm -hmm. and they're putting out fake calls to fake apps. Mm. You know, all of a sudden you see tons of traffic going to a Pandora app in the United States or yeah. a Spotify app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, we're seeing that there's actually no way of that being possible because the residential IP that they're also spoofing doesn't mm. have any connected TV devices associated mm. with it based on historical data. Right? So like we see things like that going on. In addition to more of your sort of like classic fraud where, you know, apps literally playing ads nonstop in the background. You know, you go onto your connected TV device, you download a crossword puzzle app yeah. on CTV, yeah. and while you're playing it, there's just nonstop ad calls of all course. day long. So it's it's really varied and diverse, which okay. I think is also kind of interesting. So let's just say a marketer or, or an agency wanted to use you, w would you be integrated into the ad server? How, where do you sit in that? In that? So what's the, what's the process for them to use you? Great question. So, I mean, one of the biggest concerns we looked at when we first started investigating in this space um, actually, fun story. Back in 2016, we had one of our annual hackathons, mm -hmm. and that's where I got a first glimpse um, of my engineering team sort of investigating the space and presenting on it. And their whole solution revolved around a one by one pixel. Right. Because even back then, they saw how fragmented the space was. Mm. To do one off integrations would be a nightmare, and you'd never be able to scale. Right. So we built everything around implementing just a standard one by one image pixel. Okay. The same sort of tag as an impression tracker or right. a click tracker. Right. It sits within the ad server. Okay. Or it sits within the media partner you're working with right. who's actually right. running that inventory. Right. And then that tag will fire across all the different devices. And we'll measure accordingly. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Andrew, thank you for the uh, the uh, in depth sort of uh, analysis of the CTV space and the fraud involved. And we look forward to more innovation from you guys this year. Yeah, so absolutely, Andrew's always available for anybody who's looking to use the product. So Andrew, thank you for coming in. Great, thanks. And so that much. was Trader Talk TV, and we'll see you next time.